Hello and welcome to this video. We will continue talking about quantitative trading. This relationship between holding period and consistency of return will be discussed later on. The upshot here is that the more regularly you want to realize profit and generate income, the shorter your holding period should be. There is a misconception errored by some investment advisor through that if your goal is to achieve maximum long-term capital growth, then the best strategy is to buy and hold one. This notion has been shown to be mathematically false. In reality, maximum long-term growth is achieved by finding a strategy with the maximum sharp ratio, provided that you have access to sufficient high leverage. Therefore, comparing a short-term strategy with a very short holding period, small annual return, but very high sharp ratio, to a long-term strategy with a long holding period, high annual return, but lower share ratio, it is still preferable to choose the short-term strategy even if your goal is long-term growth, bearing tax consideration and the limitation on your margin borrowing. A taste for plausible strategies and their pitfalls. Now, let's suppose that you have read about several potential strategies that fit your personal requirement. Presumably, someone else has done backtests on these strategies and reported that they have great historical returns. Before proceeding to devote your time to performing your comprehensive backtest on this strategy, there are a number of quick tests you can do to make sure you won't be wasting your time or money. How does it compare with a benchmark and how consistent are its returns? This point seems obvious when the strategy in question is a stock trading strategy that buys stocks. Everybody seems to know that if a long-only strategy returns 10% a year, it is a not too fantastic because investing if an index fund will be generated as much, if not better, return on average. However, if the strategy is a long short dollar neutral strategy, for example the portfolio holds long and short position with equal capital, then 10% is a quite a good return, because the benchmark of comparison is not the market index, but a riskless asset such as the yield of the 3 month US Treasury bill. Another issue to consider is the consistency of the returns generated by the strategy. So the strategy may have the same average return as the benchmark, perhaps it delivered positive returns every month while the benchmarks occasionally suffered some very bad months. In this case, we will still deem the strategy superior. This leads up to consider the information radio or shared radio rather than returns as the proper performance measurement of a quantitative trading strategy. Information radio is the measure to use when you want to access a long-only strategy. It is defined as information radio equals average of excess returns standard deviation of excess return, where excess returns equals portfolio returns minus benchmark returns. Now the benchmark is usually the market index to which securities are trading belong. For example, if you trade only small cap stocks, the market index should be the standard and poor small cap index of the Russell 2000 index rather than the S&P 500. If you are trading just gold futures, then the market index should be gold spot price rather than a stock index. The sharp radio is actually a special case of the information radio, suitable when we have a dollar neutral strategy so that the benchmark to use is always the risk free rate. In practice, most traders use the sharp radio even when they are trading a directional long or short only strategy simply because it facilitates comparison across different strategies. Everyone agrees on that the risk-free rate is, but each trader can use a different market index to come up with their own favorite information radio, rendering comparison difficult. If the sharp radio is such a nice performance measure across different strategies, you may wonder why it is not quoted more often instead of return. In fact, when a colleague and I went to SAC Capital Advisors to pitch a strategy, their then head of risk management said to us, well, high sharp radio is certainly nice, but if you can get a higher return instead, we can all go buy bigger houses with our bonuses. This reasoning is quite wrong. 
higher chart radio will actually allow you to make more profit in the end, since it allows you to trade at a higher leverage. It is the leverage return that matters in the end, not the nominal return of a trading strategy. Now that you know what a share radio is, you may want to find out what kind of share radio your candidate strategies have. Often, they are not reported by the authors of that strategy, and you will have to email them in private for this detail. And often, they will oblige, especially if the authors are finance professors, but if they refuse, you have no choice but to perform the backtest yourself. Sometimes, however, you can still make an educated guess based on the flimsiest of information. If a strategy trades only a few times a year, chances are its chart radio won't be high. This does not prevent it from being part of a multi-strategy trading business, but it does disqualify the strategy from being your main profit center. If a strategy has dip, example, more than 10%, or lengthy, example, four or more months, drop downs, it is unlikely that it will have a high chart radio. I will explain the concept of drop down in the next section, but you can just visually inspect the equity curve, which is also the cumulative profit and loss curve, assuming no redemption of cash inflation, to see if it is a very bumpy or not. Any peak to throw of that curve is a drag down. As a rule of thumb, any strategy that has a sharper radio of less than one is not suitable as a standalone strategy. For a strategy that achieves profitability almost every month is analyzed, Sharpie Radio is typically greater than 2. For a strategy that is profitable almost every day, its Sharpie Radio is usually greater than 3. I will show you how to calculate Sharpie Radios for various strategies in examples. How deep and long is the drop down? A strategy suffers a drop down whenever it has lost money recently. A drawdown at a given time is defined as the difference between the current equity value, assuming no redemption or cash infusion, of the portfolio and the global maximum of the equity curve occurring on or before time t. The maximum drawdown is the difference between the global maximum of the equity curve with the global minimum of the curve after the occurrence of the global maximum. Time orders matters here. The global minimum must occur later than the global maximum. The global maximum is called the high watermark. The maximum drawdown duration is the longer it has taken for the equity curve to recover losses. More often, drawdowns are measured in percentage terms, with the denominator being the equity at the high watermark, and the numerator being the loss of equity since reaching the high watermark. In this table, we illustrate a typical drawdown, the maximum drawdown, and the maximum drawdown duration of an equity curve. I will include a tutorial in later examples, and how to compute these quantities from a table of daily profits and losses using either Excel or MATLAB. One thing to keep in mind, the maximum drawdown and the maximum drawdown duration do not typically overlap over the same period. Define it mathematically. Drop-down seems abstract and remote. However, in real life, there is nothing more good-wrenching and emotionally disturbing to suffer than a drop-down if you are a trader. This is as true for independent traders as for institutional ones. When an institutional trading group is suffering a drop-down, everybody seems to feel like life has lost meaning and spend their days dreading and the eventual shutdown of the strategy or maybe even the group as a whole. It is therefore something we will want to minimize. You have to ask yourself, realistically, how deep and how long a drop-down will you be able to tolerate and not liquidate your portfolio and shoot down your strategy? Will it be 20% and 3 months or 10% and 1 month? Comparing your tolerance with the numbers obtained from the back test of a candidate strategy determines whether that strategy is for you. Even if the author of the strategy you read about did not publish the precise numbers for drop downs, you should still be able to make an estimate from a graph of its equity curve. For example, here you can see that the longest drawdown goes from around February 2001 to around October 2002, 
so the maximum drawdown duration is about 20 months. Also, at the beginning of the maximum drawdown, the equity was about $2.3 per 104, and at the end, about $0.5 per 104. So, the maximum drawdown is about $1.8 per 104. Thanks for watching. We hope you learn with our content. We will continue in next videos.